One of the underappreciated but important skills in organic chemistry is learning how to interpret line diagrams, specifically how to see the things that are hidden. Because in line diagrams, we're really drawing a, a stick figure of a molecule in which we're omitting hydrogens and lone pairs. Just kind of like, you know, if I'm gonna draw a stick figure of myself here, I can draw a circle for my head and lines for, for arms and, and uh, for my legs. Just like a stick figure, if I'm drawing a stick figure of myself, I don't mean to imply that I'm completely bald and have no hands and no feet, you know. They're, they're, everything's there, it's just, we've just omitted drawing them for the interests of time. The line diagram is exactly the same way. And that in a line diagram, even though we've omitted drawing in the hydrogens and the lone pairs, we don't mean to say that they're not there. And the reason why this is important is because these hidden hydrogens and hidden lone pairs can come up to a great extent in different chemical reactions. It's really important to know that they're there because they can uh, they can be used in, in chemical reactions. Um, so one of the exercises you can work on here, and maybe you can press pause, is to try and draw in the hidden hydrogens and lone pairs for each of these molecules. So press pause, work on it yourself, and then when you're ready, press play, and we'll go through each of these examples. Okay, so let's look at this first example. Um, now this line diagram is of propene. Now each carbon here follows the octet rule. It's neutral and that means that each carbon has four bonds to it. Now we haven't drawn in the carbons but there are carbons here, here, and here. Now we haven't drawn in the hydrogens. Now this carbon on the far right here has two bonds to it. Now carbon in its neutral state has four bonds. It's going to have each bond is two electrons so a total of eight electrons. So we're going to draw in two hydrogens on this carbon. Now this carbon in the middle, it has three bonds. So again, to make carbon follow the octet rule and have a total of eight electrons around it, we'd have to draw in a single hydrogen. And finally, this carbon on the far left, it only has one bond that's drawn, this carbon-carbon bond. So we're going to have to draw in three hydrogens. Okay, so three hydrogens gives it a total of eight electrons, and it again follows the octet rule. Okay, so that's the all the hidden hydrogens for that particular molecule. Okay, good, let's look at this next example. This is an example of propyne, or one propyne. And this, let's start with this carbon actually, let's start with the one on the left this time. So let's, you can just start by drawing in the carbons. We don't have to, but it might help to just um, see things a little bit more clearly. So this carbon on the left, it has one bond that we've drawn in. It's this carbon-carbon bond. So in order for it to follow the octet rule, it is going to, because it's neutral, we haven't drawn any charges on it, it's gonna to have to have a total of eight electrons. And that eight electrons would come from three bonds, in particular to hydrogen. So we'd have three hidden hydrogens on that carbon. Now on the end, now this, this central carbon here, Notice that it's got one bond to this carbon on the left and three bonds to this carbon on the right. So it's already got a total of four bonds. That means that it has a total of eight electrons around it and therefore it already follows the octet rule. There's no hidden hydrogens present on this central carbon. Okay, so we can just sort of leave that alone. Now this carbon on the far right, it has three bonds to this carbon on the left, which means that it only has six electrons that are drawn around it. Now since we haven't drawn any charges on this end carbon, this means that there has to be a total of eight electrons around the carbon, which means that we have one hidden hydrogen. So it's drawn in right there. So that is that is one propyne. Okay, now this molecule on the right, very similar to the molecule on the left. However, there's one small difference, and what is that? We've got a negative charge present, a negative charge. And that negative charge is meant to apply to this carbon that the negative charge is closest to, which is the carbon on the end of the acetylene. And let's just actually just deal with the molecule uh, on the left-hand side first, or the part of the molecule on the left. So we've got this carbon, which we said earlier was actually, since it's neutral, it's going to have three bonds, two hydrogens, so it has uh, three hidden hydrogens in total. Central carbon already has four bonds, so there's no charge. Now, it's this carbon on the far right where things get a little interesting. So we have three bonds to carbon. Now, we it's not neutral. 
So unlike this situation where the carbon was neutral, um, we, we know that we don't actually have a hidden hydrogen present here. We don't have a hidden hydrogen. Instead, what could it be, what could be present that would give carbon uh, a negative charge? Well, it has three bonds to this carbon. So three bonds, so there's six, six bonding electrons, right? And each of those six bonding electrons, it has one half share of them. So it sort of owns three electrons. And carbon has uh, four valence electrons in its neutral free state, okay? So in order for it to have a charge of minus one, it actually has to have a pair of electrons to itself. You remember the formula for formal charge? It's like valence electrons, minus one half bonding electrons minus um, unbonded non-bonded electrons okay so in this case this number here would be three this number here is four and this number here in order for us to get minus one as our answer this would have to be two so there's actually a lone pair of electrons on that end carbon there okay so that is an example of hidden lone pairs so even though it wasn't originally drawn, we just drew a negative charge on that carbon, that implies that there is a lone pair present on that carbon. Okay, let's move to the next example. Um, now here we've got, um, first of all, we've got this, uh, this molecule is called uh, cyclopentadiene. Now it's got a, cation, a carbocation present. Let's do the easy things first. So if you count the carbons attached to uh, the bonds attached to each of these carbons. It has one, two, three, which means that there's a missing fourth bond, which is to this, to a hydrogen. There's a, another hidden hydrogen on this one as well as this one and also here. So it's actually very similar to, to each of these are very similar to this example here. So we've got a total of four sort of hidden hydrogens. Now we've got a positive charge on this carbon, a positive charge on this carbon now, how could we have a positive charge on the carbon? Well, we would have to have, if we follow the formal charge equation again, we'd have to have its valence electrons minus one half number of bonding electrons minus the non-bonding electrons. So we've got two bonds that are present to carbon here, um, and we that would give us an answer of two. So we have four for our valence electrons minus two, and we haven't drawn any non-bonding electrons. The easiest and best way for us to make this a carbocation and, and make it all follow, uh, follow the rules is for there to just simply be a hidden hydrogen on that carbon. That is the single most plausible way to draw this out. And uh, so there's a hidden hydrogen on this carbon which would make it us actually have three we'd actually have a total of well, six bonding electrons, so there's six. One half times six is equal to three, and there would therefore be no non-bonding electrons. So four minus three, that gives us an answer of plus one. So there's actually a hidden hydrogen present on this carbon, this carbocation, and you'll see this to be, generally speaking, this is the case, um, that if you have a carbocation, make sure that you only have three bonds to your carbon. And that is that you've got an empty orbital on your carbocation, um, and that becomes important in chemical reactions, as you'll you'll learn later on. Okay, so one hidden hydrogen present on this carbon, and no lone pairs. Now this last this not, second last example here, we can sort of follow what we've done in previous examples. Um, for this portion of the molecule, each of these should have one hidden hydrogen, just like these carbons on the alkenes did. Now, again, we come to a situation where we've got a negative charge present. And sort of a good rule of thumb for uh, carbon is that if a carbon has a, a negative charge, look for, or, you know, look for a hidden lone pair, okay? Should be a hidden lone pair because that, just like we saw in this previous example, is gonna to lead to a charge of, of minus one. So we can put our hidden lone pair on this. 
And actually, we should complete this. And if there's um, a positive charge, um, look look for hidden hydrogens. There may or may not be there, depending on how many carbons it's attached to. But that's what you you want to look for. Okay, there shouldn't be any hidden lone pairs on a carbocation. Okay, finally, let's do this last example. So here we've got carbon, carbon, carbon. Now this carbon is on an end, so it's only attached to one carbon, so there should be three hidden hydrogens. This carbon is also on the end, so it should be attached to three hidden hydrogens, kind of like bumping into our lone pair, our formal charge equation here. So draw it in a different color. Okay, now this carbon here has two bonds to carbon and a bond to bromine. Now that's only three. Now it's a neutral carbon, which means that it, it has to have um, a total of eight valence electrons and uh, also for there to be a formal charge of zero and the way that we can satisfy this is if we have a another hidden hydrogen present on this carbon and finally we get to bromine now bromine is also neutral and it should have a it has a formal charge of zero which means the best way for us to give it a formal charge of zero is to simply put three lone pairs around our bromine. And that, according to the formal charge equation, uh, would give us an answer of, for a formal charge of zero. So there's three hidden lone pairs um, around this atom of bromine.